To make renders like these, you need high quality assets, which is why I created Polygon, a library of models, textures, and HDRs that work in any 3D software. Get started today at polygon.com. Welcome back to the Donut Show, where we make virtual donuts that we cannot eat. In this part, we're gonna be making the icing. So, with our wonderful donut here selected, we're going to, um, well, first of all, yeah, like icing. I mean, you could do it a million ways. You could like add a plane and then like model it out and try and pull it down and then sculpt it and do a bunch of different ways. The easiest way really, whenever you're doing something is to like try to reuse part of your mesh wherever you can. So we've already got the shape of a donut. We can duplicate our donut, shave off half of it, and then we've basically got icing. So that's what we're gonna do. So enter into edit mode and we want to select half of our donut. So if we went into, you can see that, like if we looked at it from this, you know, if we, we drew, you can see we're, we're missing part of it, right? Um, because it's like, this is one of those cases where I'm trying to say, where you need to use uh, straight on, okay? So, or number pad one, number pad three, whatever you wanna do, something like that. Okay, and by the way, when you use this, it also switches you to orthographic mode, okay? So perspective mode is where you've got the, like the depth fall off, okay? Um, and then orthographic mode is when it is like, as if it was like on a focal length of like infinity. So you're seeing like the actual, what's the best way to describe it? No perspective, essentially zero perspective. Um, and you can toggle between that by the way, also with a number pad five or by clicking this little gizmo on the right hand side there at any point, it doesn't have to be in a, in a certain view. Um, okay, cool. So if we were to just drag over this right now, it looks like we've got half of our donut. However, if you moved around, you would see we're missing the other half of it, okay? Um, and that's because it's hard, okay? It, the, the, the mesh is hard, and therefore to select on the other side of it, we have to be able to see through it. And we can do that by going up here and toggling X-ray, or the hotkey for that is Alt-Z, and that will now show us right through it. And now when we drag over it, you can see that we've got exactly the top half of our donut all the way around. Okay, perfect. So we want to duplicate this and then separate it. Okay, so I'm gonna hit Shift D, which is how you duplicate, or you can go up to Mesh and then click on Duplicate, wherever that would be. Right there, Duplicate at the top, yeah, but Shift D. Okay, now when you do that, you can see that it is now locked onto my cursor, okay? And it's telling me, where do you wanna place this duplicate? And I don't, I wanna leave it exactly where it was. So if I hit escape or right click, it's gonna cancel the movement and put exactly where it was, but it is now duplicated it. Now what we wanna do is move this to its own object because you can see that we've now got vertices on top of vertices and um, they need to be their own separate objects. So to do that, the hotkey is P. P for part of the mesh, go to another, I don't know. It's P for whatever reason, it's always been P. Um, and we're looking for selection. So separate by the selected part of the mesh, okay. And now in object mode, if we switch out of uh, X-ray mode, you can see that we now have two objects and actually we can see them up here in the outliner as well, okay. And now just very quickly, because I know that some of you will have just messed up accidentally and you are now screaming at the screen, oh no, how am I gonna fix this? When you did this step, you duplicated it, you right click to cancel it, and then you accidentally did a single click. <laughs> if you clicked something else, you've now got mesh on top of a mesh and you don't know which vertice is which, like which is the one that was the, uh, the one that you just made, right? Um, or, or which one is the actual donut. So if you ever run into this problem, what you can do is to select only things that are connected, because these are no longer connected, right? There's pits that are not connected. Uh, it's control L or just mouse over and then just hit a single L. L for loose, loose parts, is it? I don't know what it is. Link, oh, it's linked. Okay, select linked, there they go. <laughs> um, then when you do that, you can actually, uh, yeah, find the, the right part of your mesh. Okay, so now I've actually just got just my donut and then just my icing, fantastic. Okay, so up here in the outliner, you can see two objects and it's probably a good time to name it, okay? So you can name it by just double clicking in the outliner and we can call it icing. Another way to name it is if you select, if you've just got your object selected anywhere in your 3D viewport, it's the same hotkey as uh, Windows, renaming files, it's F2, F2. And I can now type in 
donut. And there we go. So two things and we could organize it however we want. Um, cool. So our icing is currently looking like a skin tight something. It's got to have some thickness to it. Okay. And we can do that with the modifiers. Okay. So going over here to your modifier stack again, uh, we are looking for something called the solidify modifier right here. There really needs to be a search function for uh, the modifier stack, but there's just a lot here at the moment. So solidify. Okay. Now when we do this, you might not have actually really seen much change. If you went into wireframe mode, which you could do by hitting Z and then dragging to the left to go wireframe or up here. So this is solid view mode. This is wireframe mode. Okay. Um, in wireframe mode, we're able to see just the raw mesh without any faces. Um, you can see that it's now, it's got, it looks like a donut within a donut, but it's got thickness to it, but it is pointing it in the wrong direction. So this offset setting here from minus one, we want to change that to one and now go back to solid view. Okay, so that is a, just a, like a doona of uh, icing. <laughs> it is, it's a lot. So we're going to turn our, our thickness down to be something a little more reasonable. And by the way, these, when you're dragging these values here, uh, here's a tip. It, you can see that it's, it's like really hard to control because subtle movements is what I need, but it's moving it by, by a lot. If you hold down shift, that is uh, increment, no, not incremental. What is it? Smooth movements? Subtle movements. Yeah. Anyways, holding down shift when you need to use small numbers. And control, by the way, will snap it to increments. So I use that actually quite a lot. Um, so yeah, smooth, uh, sorry, shift for smooth movements and control for incremental or both. Smooth, uh, like subtle and incremental. Anyways, all right. I'm giving you all the hotkeys and everything at once. I hope it is not too much for you. All right. I'm going to go for like something like a one, a point zero zero one five of icing because I want it to look somewhat thick, but like not too thick. Okay. Now, something to keep in mind is that this edge here, it looks kind of weird for a lot of reasons. Um, if we went into flat shading mode, you can see that it's, it's basically, it's created like a hat, <laughs> a hat on our donut. Okay. And the reason for that is the order of our modifiers here. So a modifier is, hmm, what is the best way to think of it? Well, it's working from top to bottom. That's, that's how we'll describe it. Okay, modifiers are fantastic because at any point we can change these settings. It is a non-destructive way of working. This subdivision setting that I had before, I think it's too high. So I can come in here and I can change these settings, okay? Make it lighter. Um, if it was not, if I was to apply it or I did it a different way, I could not change those settings. Non-destructive, it is fantastic. Um, it also means that, uh, yeah, it's working from, from top to bottom. So what I want to do is move this above my subdivision, which I can do by just dragging these dot, dots at the top here, just dragging that up. And you can see that now it's doing the, if I just turn that off, it's doing the thickness part first, and then it is smoothing it, which means that that edge there that was like this before is now being forced to go like this because of the subsurf, because it adds those points and then it kind of averages them out, um, which is, yeah, how subdiv, subdiv works. Um, there we go. Cool. So now, I don't know, now that thickness doesn't look like enough. So I'll just increase that a little bit and I'm going to go shade smooth again. Okay. Lovely. Well, we made good time. Um, yeah, let's just uh, jump to the next video. We're actually going to start uh, modeling in the dripping parts of our icing in the next part and doing a little bit of sculpting as well. So click here to join me in the next part and I'll see you there.